What's going on, Nature Freaks? What's going on, Nature Freaks? Dave and Jeremy back at it for another Saturday slap in the face. Dave and Jeremy back at it for another Saturday slap in the face. What are you doing? Mimicry? We're not supposed to mimic each other, though. Oh, sorry. So if you haven't figured it out yet, the Saturday slap's all about mimicry. That's right, and mimicry can come in different forms. You got color, you got pattern, you got shape, you got movement. It can even be related to smell. Yeah, sometimes you mimic a rotten pumpkin pretty good. <laughs> Cut it out! Nature in your face! Alright, so our iguana, Gumby, okay, is here to not only look adorable, but to help us out with the first one. We're going to be talking about eye spots that fall in the pattern category. And the iguanas have an eye spot on the side of their jowl right here. Obviously the males stick out more, a little more impressive. But when they flare out that dewlap, and then they have the fake eye spot. It looks like a massive head with an eye, and that'll deter predators. But if a predator does attack them, it draws attention away from the real eye, which is closed right now, and goes to the potential fake eye. Yeah, that's cool. Now, eye spots are not limited to reptiles. Your tropical fish, a lot of them have eye spots on the back fin, the caudal fin, which is just a way to confuse larger fish that might want to prey on them from picking at the tail rather than the vulnerable eye and head. It also just, if the fish is swimming this way, it's kind of weird to have an eye here and it's like it's swimming backwards. So it really confuses both predator and prey by having that eye spot on the caudal fin. Yeah, now one of the coolest uh, insects are known for, you know, probably the most famous for the mimicry just period. But one of the coolest ones we've seen is the blue morpho butterfly in uh, Costa Rica, yep. Central America. So on one side, they're bright blue, but the front facing, they can actually mimic a furtive lance, a highly venomous snake, yeah. when they open their wings along the side there. Yeah, which is not only imitating a snake from the side, but when the owl morph butterfly spreads its wing, or the blue morph, as they, Jeremy mentioned, it has two larger eyes that imitate an owl, so a bird of prey. So when the wings are folded up, it looks like a venomous snake. When he opens them, it looks like an owl. Ooh. Two for the price of one. <laughs> Yeah, the Atlas Moth is another one, a giant Atlas Moth. Now recently, our buddy Christian Bass, who has a super cool channel, we're gonna link that description. We'll even throw up the um, full video of this uh, moth here. He filmed the Atlas Moth. They're also known as the Snakehead Moth, so same category. When they open their wings, along the side, it's supposed to resemble a cobra, which would be pretty intimidating if yeah. you were a bird. Mm -hmm. You're like, do you want to eat the cobra's face? I don't think you do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even another animal with an eye spot that we personally use in our traveling show is the rainbow boa. Now a rainbow boa has ocelli, which is just another name for eye spots. And when they coil around a branch, it literally looks like a bird of prey looking back. And you might not think that that would, you know, confuse a predator, but it really does. And so when they see that, they get confused and they leave it alone. They fly away, they don't touch it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, not only eye spots, some animals take it even further. They have the whole stinking head of an animal. <laughs> right. So these are examples of animals that are mimicking something potentially more dangerous than themselves, obviously, which is just one form of mimicry. So you have a lot of caterpillars, like the snakehead caterpillar, that actually looks like a snake. Literally two eye spots, nose, I mean resembling a snake on the back, which is pretty awesome. Alright guys, but the all-time coolest form of eye spot mimicry has to be the Himalayan griffin vulture. This is a bird that when it opens its wings imitates a Himalayan brown bear. I mean, think about that. A bird imitating a bear. That's pretty cool. Yep. So it kind of crouches down, spreads its wings, and rather than having markings, it has two bald patches that look like the eyes, and then the front kind of looks like the, the bear's nose facing forward. But that's one of the most amazing forms of mimicry that you can see. All right, the second example of mimicry that we're going to talk about is color, which is related to pattern. And one of the most famous examples is in the harmless tricolored king snakes and the very deadly coral snakes. We've all heard of the poem, when red touches yellow, kill a fellow, red touches black, venom lack. Now, several examples of that would be the blue coral, which is mimicked by the pink-headed reed snake in Asia. So you have the model and you have the mimic in the Patesian, which is what we're mainly been talking about, where you have an animal that's harmless, that's mimicking one that could be potentially venomous or toxic. Yeah, and we've got an example right here. 
This is a corn snake, and some people confuse it for a venomous copperhead. Uh, for people with a trained eye, like like ourselves, <laughs> I don't think it looks anything I like I think anybody who knows anything about snakes would not confuse <laughs> this with a copperhead. But I mean, there's a lot of people out there that don't know, and that's how mimicry, it works quick. It's not, animals aren't studying, you know, they get used to colors, they get used to these patterns and movements, and it tricks them, they're like, all right, I'm gonna leave it alone, which is the whole point of it. Another recent example would be the cottonmouth versus the water snake, which we filmed down south in Alabama. And right. we put them side by side, and they they really, really do look fairly identical. Yeah, they're dark, heavy body. They both can have the triangular shape. Hey, when that water snake flattens out its head, yeah, that's a great example. Now, moving out of snakes, if we went to salamanders, one of the coolest ones out there is the red-cheeked salamander. The um, imitator. Yeah, and then there's the imitator, which is the the mimic of um, that. So that one, the red cheek is toxic if eaten by an animal. The imitator is not, so he's you know, out there faking it like, don't eat me. <laughs> yeah, and we, uh, we actually film <clears throat> those in the Smoky Mountains. which is it, They have a very limited range, talking about the red cheek. And we were able to find and photograph those a couple years back. So that was a great example. Thank you. Now, another example that's kind of, it's different than the examples we've been given. Two animals that are toxic. So the malarian, um, you have the viceroy butterfly and the monarch. So they are very similarly patterned and they use these patterns to warn off that they're both toxic. So there's not a mimic in a mono, they're both mimicking these same patterns, but both of them are toxic. But one other example base. would be the uh, poison dart frogs in the rainforest, which are brightly colored. <clears throat> so you got two brightly colored frogs that look exactly like each other that are both venomous. So now we need to move on to shape, right? That's you mentioned shape, yes. definitely. So animals use different shapes um, to resemble not only other animals, but themselves. sometimes um, yeah, themselves or inanimate objects even. Yeah, and uh, one of my favorite examples is uh, in Australia, I caught a shingleback skink and the head looks identical to the tail. So it's basically an animal that is imitating itself. And so if a predator comes in to attack it, it'll flip its body around and it'll show its tail, which you really can't, to a predator anyway, you can't decipher head from the tail. They peck at that, they mess with that, it's not really hurting the skink, he gets away with his life. That's an actual butthead. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, stick bugs are a super cool example of this. I mean, so they're not taking the shape of another animal, they're taking the shape of a stick. I don't know if you guys have seen like a walking stick or stick bugs, they're super cool because they literally look like a branch with legs just doop, 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 yep. doop, moving along, so that's really cool. Katie did. Mm -hmm. There is a Katie did. That or did she? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There was a Katie did in Costa Rica that we had filmed. I don't even know how we saw the thing because when you see the side by side comparison, identical. It, from the veins in the leaf to the stem, mm. looks exactly like one another. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot of people refer to them as like leaf bugs because, yeah, it looks like they're carrying <clears throat> the leaf on the side of their or body. The praying mantises. There's oh, yeah, there's thing. a lot of mantids out there. Um, what did we see? We saw the helmeted. Yeah. Costa Rica. Uh, mantis in uh, Costa Rica. And there's also the orchid mantids, and they look like flowers, you know? And they can just sit in those flowers, um, and they're waiting for something to come by, like an insect. It's like another insect that they can grab. So that's awesome. Yep. Now, the. We have two that are kind of like. They're in. They're leading us into the next category of shape and movement yep uh, which uh, i mean i feel like a lot of the walking sticks stuff like that they could be in this too but the vine snake and the rough green snake mm -hmm. yeah now <laughs> when you see a rough green snake it will not slither away what it will do is it will sway almost like a vine or a, a branch or a leaf in the wind it's really really cool so they just kind of rock back and forth and uh you know, obviously to a person, you're not going to be too confused, but for a predator, they might just believe that it's something swaying in the wind and go about its business without ever trying to hurt it. Right, it's not going to stand out to them. Mm. It just seems natural. It's in a tree. Sometimes when they do this on the ground, you're like, you're not fooling anybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they're almost always in the trees. There are yeah. more. And the same thing with the vine snakes. They just blend in. So they have the shape and the color as well of a vine. So a lot of these go hand in hand, and a lot of animals have... They use multiple of these to mimic 
not only other animals. Um, it could be the same species, could be different species, or it could be inanimate objects, like we said. Yeah, another um, example of yeah. movement would be the buzzing of a tail. A harmless mm -hmm. snake imitating or supposedly like imitating a bull snake. A thing. Yeah, yeah, one of the racers. Uh, I'm, I can name probably a half a dozen Even snakes. the corn snakes yep. uh, vibrate their tails. Pine snakes, so yeah, to imitate the rouse snake, that's a good one. One of the coolest, if you don't know about this, you need to look this up. And I mean, we're, we're going to show you a picture. Is the spider tail viper from Iran? And so this, at the end of its tail, it um, has a little clump, a little club here with, with little legs, and they just kind of move it. So it's got the shape of a spider, and it's got the movement. And they sit and wait for a bird to come down, and then shikaka. You know, speaking of the tail, here in our area, we also have <laughs> cotton mouths and. Uh, Copperheads. Uh, copperheads, yep, that's what I... And they have a bright yellow tail as juveniles, and they use that to attract birds, small mammals. Looks like a little caterpillar. The animal moves in to attack it, boom, they get those fangs. We've given a ton of examples of, yeah. you know, mimics and their models. Um, and there's we a could lot go on and on, on. Yeah, especially with insects. There's like an infinite amount uh, with insects. They're probably the most famous. Plants even do it. Um, there's some plants that can mimic the smells that they produce in nectar when they really don't to attract pollinators. So, I mean, it's a really amazing thing. It's a rabbit hole that you could just go down forever. Ant mimic spiders. Spiders yeah. that look like ants. They give off a pheromone to confuse the ants. They infiltrate the nest. They rot, rob it. It's just all kinds of examples. But <clears throat> I think you've given enough in this episode. So. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed this Saturday slap in your face. Hope you guys learned something. If you did, we would hope that you would subscribe to our channel, like the video. Comment, 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 comment. Drive the algorithm. Yep. Imitate what he said. Comment. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next episode of Nature in Your Face.